Today on the Ripe Rundown, we recap a wild day that had the bananas traversing five different cities. And I've got a couple tricks up my sleeve. All that and more right, right now, now on, on the, the Ripe Rundown. Rundown. That ball is annihilated on the money in time. And the ball's on fire. Wow. These guys are out of their minds. Back flipping makes the catch. Oh, what a canyon. Oh, a new trick added to the arsenal. Colossal flash. Are you kidding me? Welcome in to episode three of the Ripe Rundown. We are breaking down a magical month of May in Banana Land. Biko Scala, a headsetless bananas broadcast entertainer. That puppy is somewhere off in the land of good and plenty. Cowboy Kyle Luigs, the ace of your squad. It was a great month for you, man. It was. A lot of traveling, a whole lot of new places that I had never been. Um, but that was your first mistake, you know. I never leave the house without my cowboy hat. And you shouldn't leave the house without your headset either. Yeah, that's just a bad way to start the day. Well, anyway, it was an amazing month. We started in Kansas City to Savannah to Las Vegas, Oklahoma City, finished up in Tulsa. Let's break it all down in the Banana Ball Brief. We're kicking things off in Kansas City to Legends Field in the Paris of the Plains. Bill Leroy getting plunked. He is grittying. We're gritting up in the booth. Josh involved as well. Noah Bridges at the dish, bottom of the eighth. This is our final inning of the night. And after the crow hop pitch, goes to the backstop, he is struck out. Monarchs win night one. Alex Gordon throwing out the first pitch that counts on night two. That's gonna be a ball, bad start for Kyle Lewigs, but he would be able to recover. Look at this, behind the mound, fielding your position. I mean, who's this guy on the mound? I'm not gonna talk about it enough, but I mean, pitchers are athletes, and I mean, that's a pretty good play there. Good inside fastball there. Gonna get the inside, or get the crowd going with a nice little clap. Over 8,000 of your best fans, and you're getting a strikeout. Punch out, see ya! We go straight into, is that the Black Beatles? Oh my gosh, all you guys are frozen. How'd that happen, buddy? It just got stuck in time. I don't even know what happened. Okay, I'm glad that you were freed. Another comebacker. Oh my goodness, to second. Brian Cox between the legs. That was mystical and what a nice little took a shit. It looked just like a one, two, three double play, but I mean, getting Herman to ground it out to me is probably one of the best hitters I've faced on tour. Yeah, that's an eight year MLB guy right there. Speaking of former major leaguers, Jeremy Guthrie on the bump. Throwing the Chiefs special, he is making a name for himself in Banana Land. That was a really fun one from the Kansas City legend. And in the top of the ninth, Danny Hosleyan gets a fly out to Michael Deeb. This series is evened at a game apiece. Big opening for game three. Danny Hosley and the boys are bumping it. We're sending it straight to the bottom of the ninth. Bananas down to their final out. Eric Jones! Talk about a trip to the land of good and plenty. No doubt smash, so nice. You're gonna get to see it twice. See ya! That was an extreme tater tot. Send us to showdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the showdown. Thank you, Mr. Young Professor. Michael, Michael Rodolfo, former White Sox top prospect at the dish against the former Angels man, Connor Higgins. And well, he doesn't know how to do chases. And that was rather embarrassing, to be honest. And the Kansas City Monarchs are ahead, four to three. No, not see ya. EJ off the top of the wall, mere inches away from the first out of the park showdown homer. Thought he had two in two swings. Oh no, you gotta get on your horse, Jonesy. The Monarchs win the series two games to one. So May 15th, we go. I am all tangled up in headphones. And Biko is now, oh my goodness, Dakota McFadden! Back to the wall, it's out of here! Biko Scala, good luck in the first base box! We don't even need him. One batter later, Dakota McFadden walks off the bottom of the pit. Now, I didn't want to say that we don't need you because I need you in every aspect of my life, Biko. But, um, I mean, it was just so cool to have my own little moment up there. We had Barry Aldridge up there doing a handstand. Yes. Um, you in the first base box with Maceo. I just felt like I had to let something rip, and I've heard enough of your home run calls that I felt like it was just coming out of me. Uh, it was a 10 out of 10 call, and pretty magical to get to see it from that angle in the first base coach's box. Yeah, it looked like you had nine or 10 family members in attendance there. <laughs> yeah, had to. Connor Higgins chucking 97 into Bill's mitt, who's just lounging in a little beanbag chair. To the top of ninth, we go. Breland on Madova, line out to Noah Bridges. Nanners, 4-2 victors. To May 13th, we go, and Jake Skull, I don't know how that got in there. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, you're gonna make a bad pitch every once in a while. Guy's a good hitter, especially with that mohawk. Chase Acuff graduating, how about that? A Masters for our master class shortstop for the party animals, Bill Leroy 
and Sean Fluke with the oddest exchange on a ground back to the pitcher you've ever seen in your life. A cuff then gets plunked and is going to take the segue to the base. Happy birthday, Chadwick! We are going absolutely buck wild in the booth for it. To May 15th, the Florence Yalls of the Frontier League come to town. Christian Dearman peekaboo between the legs. That second round pick from the Boston Red Sox, Cole Brannon gunned down. Such a fun pickoff. I mean, we're, we're already halfway through the tour almost, and it's just fun to see players still pulling out new tricks and new gimmicks. Uh, Kyle going a little Nostradamus. Back pick here, Bill. Uh oh, foul ball, next pitch. Did you do it? As there's your back pick. There was. You called it, oh, Kyle. Great. Great, I mean, great back pick, great play from Bill, but I mean, I feel like he has to give me all the credit because I literally took a play out of his book and, and um, you know, made that happen. Raise a brewer on the mound. He's not a pitcher, but he gets Dakota McFadden swinging. Yeah, I did not have any family there at all, but it was fun to see him. I mean, I love the EFIS to start the at bat. I mean, just <laughs> keeping everybody on their toes. Dearman's still on the mound, and all of a sudden, uh oh, we got David Heilbrunn. Ejected for bunting, only the third time that's happened in banana ball history. First time it was a challenger, and DR Meadows walking off the bottom of the sixth, little Harlem shake to celebrate. And now to the top of the ninth, funky hop for Ryan Cox. The Yalls get on the board, they're partying like it's 1969, but the bananas come away with a five to one victory. They're now five and three on the tour against challengers. To Vegas we go. Oh, D-Mac, how many loved ones do you have in the stands? Oh, man, I had two. I had Sherry and Johnny Dope, my whole family from Bakersfield when I was with the train robbers out there. Reese Hampton leading off the ball game from the left side, pops out down the left field line, and then a couple at-bats later from the right side against Higgins, he pops out down the right field line. First time anyone's popped out to fans twice in a game. He did it from both sides of the plate. Bill Lee striking out Jake Skull. You don't see that every day. Bananas win four to two on to evening two in Vegas and a legendary, and I mean legendary home run derby. Dan takes down Jake Skull, 11 to 10. Most homers we've ever had in a pregame derby to decide home and away. We want all the walk-offs here in Vegas. We're gonna be the home team. Tanner Thomas coming up to the dish with some showgirls. D-Mac doing his best Mark Stone impersonation. Crowd love that. <laughs> to the bottom of the seventh, Shane Victorino, the flying Hawaiian against Sean Fluke. First pitch he sees in his banana's career. Are you kidding me? That's walking off the inning. He was so nervous the whole time in the dugout. I have no idea why. Calm, cool, and collected, leading off the inning with a double there. That is a two-time World Series champion getting it done. Party animals celebrate a victory by hopping in the pool in right center and absolutely murdering that wall. Now to Oklahoma City, where the OKC resident and firefighter Matt Wolf, full-time trick second baseman, play by our man in the overalls to the top of the third. Breland Almodova literally leaves the building. He's going into the Hampton Inn Hotel back there. That was an absurd bomb. What a way to get your first banana ball home run. All of a sudden, we're tipping balls off here. Jared Donaldson on the bump. Dustin Baber kicking holes in beers and drinking them down. We got an engine from Wolfie's fire station. He's back flipping in his full gear. Jocelyn Allo, the all-time college softball Home run queen, making an appearance for the Bananas, and it would be Dustin Baber cleaning things up. Four to three victory for the party animals. Both teams split Oklahoma City. Oklahoma is on the line in Tulsa. DR jumping over Danny Hosley and making the catch himself. Craziest F8 you'll see in your life. Nothing like a uh, pop out to the on deck circle to the center fielder. How the ding did you do that, man? <laughs> Something we failed twice two days before, and luckily we got it this time. Shout out Zach. Shout out to Vaughn, shout out to the whole creative team. We finally got it done. Glad we threw a strike. Sorry, Bill, had to call you off there. F8, baby, behind, to, behind home plate. This is the showdown! Thank you, Mr. Young Professor. Matt Malatesta on the mound. Reese Hampton with a hot shot down the right field line. That is gonna be good for an inside the Parker. Four to three, Party Animals lead. Eric Jones against Breland Almodova. Huh? It all comes down to this. That thing smashed off the left field wall. Deja vu to Kansas City. It's kicking back to A Cup. DJ on his horse the whole time this time around. And after Cornette 360 tag, Vincent Chapman calls him out. Chaos ensues, and that is everything that happened in the month of May.
And what a month of May that was, Biko, and what a finish in Oklahoma. We're gonna jump now right into the stats. We've got Dan still pacing at the top for averages at 367. Jones is still proving to be the top dog in RBIs as well as home runs. Cox, I don't think anybody's gonna catch him in the trick play department. And Dearman, DJ, and Hosley still leading the way in MPIs. How do we turn the trains off around here? Let's take a look at the party animal stats, Mr. Lou Higgs. Reese Hampton pacing all hitters with that 392 batting average. He's on an absolute tear. Big school and Bryson Bloomer tied atop the ribeye category and trick plays just like Ryan Cox. Dustin Baber is pulling away from the pack. And in the MPI department, Brett Helton is a cut above the rest. Look at that guy go. He is unstoppable. So the party animals take the Sooner State. A fracas ensues in Tulsa. We get a couple game suspension for Vincent Chapman, one for Eric Jones. And it was a wild end to a really fun month. Yeah, definitely. A lot of things to note from that, but I think the biggest one is the things coming forward. You know, it's blessings in disguise. Um, we've got some things in the works that I think that are going to be seen in this next month's recap um, that are very exciting and just up in the game of banana ball. Challenges are coming to our young sport. You'll see them in Nashville. Absolute blast. Okay, let's puppy this thing on over to Josh's mayhem. Josh, what do you got going on back there? Biko, I'm standing right here, and I'm bringing you a new segment we call Josh's Mayhem, where I'm bringing you some stats you wouldn't normally find in your broadcast. Okay, DR Meadows, he had the 1,000th at bat of the season for the Savannah Bananas this year. And by the way, both teams eclipsing the 30 home run mark in the month of May. It's Eric Jones Jr. for the Bananas, Tanner Thomas for the Party Animals, but I I'm gonna remain nameless on who he hit that home run off of. Uh, yeah. Okay, 300 hits, both teams eclipsing that mark. Joe Lytle for the Party Animals, DR Meadows again for the Bananas. And now, you talk about some walk-offs? We got 100 for you from the Bananas. Danny Hosley with the walk-off sprint. And Dalton Malden getting the 100th stolen base of the season for the Bananas. By the way, it was a steal of first base. Now, the Bananas pitching staff eclipsed 300 innings here in the month of May. And how about the party animal staff? They're going to reach the 200 inning mark as well. That happened in the exact same game in Las Vegas. And now, one bonus stat for you. How about the Bananas? 200 runs scored this season. Shout out our glove magician, Ryan Cox, for scoring that run. That's all I've got for you for Josh's mayhem. Biko Kyle, back to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tolevsky. Uh, can someone turn these trains off? You, th you think they're going to Celebration Station? Well, no, Biko, because that was last month. And I don't even, Savannah's not even known for trains, so I don't even know what's going on anymore. It's been going for like seven minutes straight. Something's going wrong back there. Uh, that's okay. We're just going to keep chugging along on the ripe rundown. Time for our best defensive plays of the month. Your potassium packed plays. Calypsi dancing on the bump. Love in Banana Land, liner to center and Cole Brandon. Nice lunging snag, tumbling to the ground. He's made three fantastic plays now in less than four innings of Banana Ball. Yeah, that was just terrific extension and a great jump in center field from Cole Brandon there. That ball almost going over his head. That one came in at 75. Fastball at 89. EJ trying to track this down, running out of room, makes the catch! Waiting over the turf! Stupendous play by Eric Jones! And the Bananas flashing the leather in the fourth. Kyle Lewick for four goose eggs now. And how about this? A six pitch inning from Mr. Lewick's. Goes back up the middle, Acuff diving snap! Is that two pitches? That's two pitches, two outs. All right. Well, if Dakota does a swing right here, that's on him. That's a fact. You're going to lay a cookie in? I'm going to cookie right down the floor. I'm going to try to throw it right down the middle. That ball lined over the leap of Cox and into left. Deep coming up throwing. Thomas waved around third. Throw on the fly! In time! Michael Vitamin D with a howitzer from left. And Tinder Thomas cut down at the dish. 
What a throw from Michael Deeb and give credit Bill Roy receiving that just a little bit towards the first baseline. He's going to move back towards home plate and apply that tag on Tanner Thomas. For Reese Hampton, not only does he have a 407 batting average against Kyle Lewis on the season, but he leads all players with batting average with runners in scoring position. Although Danny Hosley is going to make a great play at second base and yet another defensive gem, whether he is in right field or at second base, he can do it all. Full extension, face slamming against the grass and throwing it first from his knees. Gets Reese Lightning by a hair. That ball driven to dead center. Dior Meadows on his horse. Diving attempt. Oh, what a stupendous catch. The doctor with one of the greatest plays you'll ever see from a center fielder. Are you kidding me? DR Meadows looking over his shoulder to make this catch and laying out. Are you kidding me? How about that snag by Cole Brandon? Second time we've seen him on the ripe rundown. This time it was for a great highlight. Yeah, the guy literally double jumped um, while he was still in the air. And it's fun to get the y'alls, you know, into the honorable mention of the potassium pack place. Do we have to call the mayor? How do I shut down this train? Uh, and how about DR in center field in Kansas City? Maybe the best play I've ever seen made by an outfit. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We have a lot of days left on this young tour, but I don't think that we're going to see a better play than that. Yeah, that was just mind-boggling, mind-boggling stuff. Okay, let's move in to some of the best stuff that has happened off the field in the month of May. It is Banana Land's Best. A good bunch of the bananas and party animals all rolled into Bethany Children's Health Center in Oklahoma City and played an impromptu banana ball game with Hey Baby, all the promotions, all the bells and whistles. Uh, somebody's cutting onions near me because this is one of the coolest things that I've ever gotten to see and just the smiles and the fun and the jubilation on everyone's face. Uh, I know you heard a lot of good stories from this, Kyle. Yeah, definitely. Just having the opportunity and the platform for anywhere that we go on tour to have people welcome us with open arms and um, have impact on children like this at these hospitals and what they're going through is just insane to think about. Shout out to Bethany Children's Health Center media team. This video rocks. I mean, they sauced this thing up real quick. Yeah, and it's so cool that they build opportunities for them at the hospital, like this insanely nice turf field that they have to go out to uh, whenever they have visitors like us coming into town. Yeah, I heard this was just about as impactful an event as pretty much all of our guys have ever been a part of. So thank you for the Bethany Health Children's Center for inviting all our guys and, and having a lot of fun going bananas with us. And you cannot forget our guy JJ was back in Banana Land for three games. That is always heartwarming and inspirational for us. And we had not one, but two cancer survivors as home run hitters. Those were truly magical moments. Yeah, two of the loudest moments in crowds that I've heard across any of the states or cities that we've came to. Yeah. I think we're really starting to hit our stride with these impactful moments that we're able to make on the tour, and it's really cool to see. We're about halfway through our tour, but still more than half of our games to play. There is so much room for many more magical moments, and we are wrapping up with our final segment of the day. It is going to be the ripe stuff. No, no, no. Before we get there, we're going to do one new segment that we're starting on the new ripe rundown of May. It is called Biko's Blunders, and we're going to take a deeper dive in all of the mistakes that you made in the month of May. All right, Biko, why don't you just go ahead and, and you do it, it so longer. much that it feels like it's routine. Ryan Cox, he's been making that Who is routine. Who just hit that wow. home run? It's Eric Jones, Kyle. He, and Ryan Cox hasn't even hit a home run in his career, ever. Yeah. And he's not a righty. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough life. You know? Three nights ago, now tell me who that was. That was Danny Hosley. Yep, and that wasn't D-Mac. He didn't have any family in town. Out, so we, we knew he wasn't in the park. Jake Peavy was in the booth for that, too. He was talking about how much he loved Dakota McFadden coming around the bases. I had to correct him. And, your, and yourself. <laughs> yeah. Now this is the one that just... Chop to short. Ryan Cox charging between the legs. He makes it look so easy. And a tall feat for Dakota McFadden. Who is that? Oh, Pico map? boofed it. It's Dakota Albritton. Does he look anything like Dakota McFadden? No, but they he doesn't. Do. He doesn't look like anybody else on our team. Pico. But they've got the same first name. Anybody can make that mistake. Just wait for EJ to talk. Hear, hear what he's got going on back there. I'm tired of correcting you. Let's see what he's got. Hold on. That's a f***ing strike. Okay, That's that, <laughs> that was EJ's blunder. I'm happy that somebody else is getting in on the action. 
Hawks. That ball sprayed to left center for Jacob Robson. Nobody. And looks like Dakota McFadden out into left. That's Hosley. Even EJ is going to catch you. Uh, he's going he's gonna to catch you up on the action. Pico, you Pico. son of a gun. Wow. <laughs> it will never die. I don't remember that. <laughs> what do you got now? Oh, you're gargling water. I can't even let you catch it. Back up the middle. Malachi rounding third. The throw home right from school. On the money. One of my test calls of the tour. Starts as a loss. Ends up. No, no, what is it? This is just this is a technological blunder. First of all. Use your ears, Robert. What's up? <laughs> Insightful information. Great Josh is trying his best. He's holding the wires, everything above the floor. Look at the kids in the background. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the Statue of Liberty. Statue Waiting Liberty. to hear something. Same ballpark, two different conversations. Yeah. <laughs> and fun fact, Josh is still making that pose. He hasn't left this pose since we left Las Vegas. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about that, and I definitely don't know what to say about what I just witnessed or watched. Do you have anything to say about yourself? No, I think everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody feels that way. Was that uh, Miley Cyrus, or was that Hannah Montana? That was right off the dome, buddy. That was just, really good stuff. Just made that up on the spot. I will give you some, I will cut you some slack. Dakota McFadden and Dakota Albright have the same name. Thank you. However, look nothing alike. Well, you know. They're looking more like every day. Uh, okay, now we finally get to our last segment of the morning. It is the ripe stuff. Remember to vote for your favorite trick play in the month of May. They're all going up against DR's backflip all the way from February in Daytona. Let's check them out. We'll kick it off with an honorable mention. You cannot vote on this, but it was so nice. We wanted you to get a gander at it. How about Baber to A cuff over to Swan? Little four, six, three for one out. Yeah, haven't seen anything like it yet this pace on tour. Look at that. Gonna see it again. Two different people touching the ball, one out, three different camera angles. <laughs> yeah. Only the best here in Banana Land. Okay, here to number five. How about Brian Fuentes playing third base, going behind the back? Well, Florence Y'all's representation. They've been all over the ripe rundown. Yeah, good to see them crack the honorable mention category, and definitely good to see them getting in on the fun and the action here at Grayson Stadium. Only the second trick play by a challenger ever. Fuentes joins Daniel Descalzo from the former major leaguers all the way back on March 11th. That was a dazzling play. Okay, to number four, we have Mr. Michael Deeb sending it deep to left in Oklahoma City. Breland Domadova! Inning winning run was on second base. He's going between the legs and grittying to celebrate. Yeah, game tied one to one, and it goes back to the last month of April, like we talked about. Breland's so comfortable going in between his legs, it's kind of starting to scare me. <laughs> that was mid air. I think both his feet were off the ground. That was a pretty dazzling play by the Stylin Hawaiian. And it's worth noting no football in hand this month. Correct. That's definitely worth noting. Uh, Deep not happy about it. How about the hair on Ryan Cox going between the legs? Double play. What a turn by Dalton Malden. Yeah, definitely. Pink everywhere. Pink in the hair, pink in EJ's cleats, and a nasty double play up the middle between the songbird of our generation and our trick stop. Always fun going glove to the bare hand. That was a doozy up the middle. The y'all still in town. This thing ripped to second. Dalton Malden, a little behind the back. Whoopsie doodle, 360. That was like four trick plays in one. Yeah, what are we calling that? The corkscrew double between the legs, 360 no look pass? That's exactly what we're calling it. I've seen it a couple times in BP, and I never thought in a million years he would bring it out in a real game. To our last trick play of the bunch, Coxie at the dish, bouncing it to Dustin Baber between the legs, 360 midair, throwing a first. How does he do that? What, yeah. Talk about hang time. Are we playing basketball? Are we playing baseball? I'm not really sure. That's one of your favorites, so I do know that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Baber fan through and through. Okay, uh, remember, you can vote on those. Link in the description of the video. Pick your favorite because it is going to go up against the best trick plays from the month of June on episode four of The Ripe Rundown. Also worth noting, good job getting through that um, section there with no blunders, man. You're, <laughs> you're starting this one off on a strong note. Thank you. I definitely did it on the first try. Thank you to our incredible crew that makes this thing happen. Yvonne Trezak, Chris Sachi, Zach Bro, Josh Tolevsky, Chad Reese, and not on the premises but still here in her heart and soul care heater. Uh, this was an absolute blast. Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, this was a fun one, man. Yeah, couldn't be happier. I'm excited to roll into the next month and see what's in store. I'm excited for a long stay here in Grayson Stadium as well as a lot of more traveling on the road. Um, could be more happy to do it with you by my side. 
gonna be an absolute blast. It's gonna be June. We will see you in early July for the June Ripe Rundown. I am Vico Scala saying so long for now. Catch you on the flippity flop. Oh, no.